Hello and welcome to another video. So in this video, we're going to be talking about functions. So what is a function? A function is essentially something that takes an input and gives an output, kind of like a, a machine of sorts. So what does that mean? So let's say I give you a value x. Well, if I apply some kind of function to it, which I did generally call f of x, so I take some function of some input x. So this right here is my input. This will result in some output y. So essentially, I take an input and I get an output. That is what a function is. More specifically, if I go ahead and have some values, let's say x, a, and let's say k, because why not? If I apply some function to it, I will get from x, I'm going to get f of x. From a, I'm going to get f of a. And finally, from k, I'm going to get f of k. So nothing too crazy there. So essentially, I take some input and I get an output of for some function, which is generally denoted with the letter f. f for function, would you? Okay. So this input for the function, this is generally known as the domain. So the domain is a set of all possible inputs, generally the x values. So the domain is a set of all possible x values. So all possible x values. Now, the output is a little bit different. So in this case, the output is known as the range. Now these terms have more specific definitions when we, when we talk about topics in linear algebra and other high level math, but for the purposes of just introductory calculus, you can just think about them this way. So, no, so once again, the range is a set of all possible outputs. So all possible outputs or the y values. So I plug in the x values to get the y values. That is how I go from my input to the output or from my domain to the range. So, these are very important words. So I'm just going to underline both of these. So as a very quick sort of example, if I have y equals the square root of x, well, the domain in this case is the set of all possible x values. So that's going to be anything from 0, because we can include the square root of 0, since that's just 0. But you can't have any negative numbers, since the square root of a negative number is undefined. But there is no limit to how far I can go for the x values. So that's just going to be infinity, which is, of course, a round bracket because we can never reach infinity. The range, on the other hand, is the exact same thing. So the range in this situation, well, that's just going to be the input and the output that I get from it. So if I plug in the square root of 0, well, I'm going to get 0. So that's still going to be 0. And of course, the square root of infinity is still going to be infinity. So that's not going to change. So in this situation, the domain and range is exactly the same. Okay, cool. So visually, it kind of looks like something like this. So I'll just switch back to white for this part. So let me just make an axis real quickly. Uh, let me just do it here, actually. It'll be probably better. There we go. Okay, so in this situation, Let's see, let's have a graph that looks like this. Uh, so here's a point, here's another kind of connection, and here's another point. So in this situation, let's call this point A, and let's call this point B. So this output would be f of A, and this output here would be f of B, because B maps to f of B right there. And similarly, A maps to f of A right there. So in this situation, the set of the domain would be all the values from A to B. So this would be the domain. It's a set of all possible x values. Similarly, the possible values here, so from f of A to f of B, that would be the range. So in this situation, the domain, oh, sorry, the range would be f of x. So generally, instead of writing y equals the square root of x, you can also write f of x equals the square root of x. They're the exact same thing because they both mean the output. So they're both describing the exact same thing. So nothing too fancy going on there. 
So let's go about this a little bit more in depth. So let's do another really quick example. So this is a very short kind of video. There's not too much to talk about this. So example. So if I have, let's, let me just draw another axis here real quick. Okay. So let's say I have a graph that looks something like this. So this point right there is one. So the y value is one, not the x value. That's zero. Here the x and y value is both zero. This value here is three. So in this situation, I mean the y value is three. Here the x value is two. Here the y value is negative two. And the x value here is three. So that's x and that's y. So in this case, for example, f of two is equal to what? Well, if I just read the graph, f of two is right at zero. So that means f of two is equal to zero. So nothing too crazy. Let me just, yep. Okay, so what is f of three equal to then? Well, f of three is again equal to, well, zero, because f of three would be the value at three, which is indeed zero. So f of three equals zero. So nothing too fancy going on there. Okay, what's the domain? Well, the domain, as I mentioned, is a set of all possible x, uh, all possible x values. So the domain in this situation would be, well, if we read it, it's going to be from 0 to 3. So 0 to 3. And we include the values because, you know, it starts and there's no restriction on the values or anything. So we include it. And here, the range would be, well, the lowest value is minus 2. So it's going to be from minus 2, and it's going to go, oh, that's a horrible 2, minus 2, and it's going to go all the way to 3. So here we put the value, the number, rather, 3. So that's not too crazy. Okay, so let's do one more example. And let's see, after that we will call it a day. Okay. Actually, there's a few more things I should probably cover about this, but we'll talk about them when we get there. Okay, so the next thing is, how do I know if something is a function or not? Well, we have some, so how do I, so how do I tell if something, or some graph rather, is a function? How do I do that? Well, we have a very simple test called the vertical line test in order to do this. So. In order to do this, so let me just kind of make that a little bit neat. Okay, so to do this, we use something called the vertical line test. So what is the vertical line test? Okay, so this is very straightforward. So all I do is I let's say I have a let's say I have a, a graph that looks something like this. Okay, well, the graph let's say it looks I don't know something like so. All I do is I draw a vertical line through one point on the graph. Now, it could be drawn to multiple points. So I could draw it here, here, here. It doesn't matter. What's important is that the, the vertical line I draw passes through only one point. So right here, it only touches this point, only touches here, only touches here, and only touches here. Okay, if this is true for every point on the graph, it's a function. So therefore, this particular graph is a function. However, something like this, for example, so if I draw another axis, so for something like this, it's not a function. So even though we passed a vertical line test here, so that's, that's okay, but if we draw it here, we're in trouble. That's, that passes this point, this point, and this point. So this, so this vertical line at this particular instance passes three points. So this is actually not a function. So not a function. Okay. So the last topic we're gonna go we're gonna cover is even and odd functions. Okay. So what is an even and odd function? How and what how do we determine if something is even or odd? Okay. Well, so let's talk about even and odd functions for a second. So even and odd functions. 
Okay, so as you can see, there's nothing too crazy about this topic. All we have to do is just kind of remember the little rules, especially use that line test. So, anyways. So, what is an even function? A function is seen to be even if f of negative x is equal to f of x. So, for example, something like f of x equals x squared is even. And the reason for that is because, well, if I plug in negative x into x squared, I'll get, well, x squared. So putting a negative sign doesn't change the initial function that I have. It's the exact same thing. So similarly, something like f of x equals x to the 4 plus x squared, that's also even. And the reason for that is because if I plug in a negative x to for all of these values, so f of negative x, well, that's going to give me x to the 4 plus x squared. So I haven't actually changed anything. It's still the original function. So as a result, it's still an even function. So that's not so bad. So if you might notice something, an even function is always symmetrical about the y-axis. So what do I mean by that? Well, if I draw the graph of y equals x squared, so that's x squared right there. If I reflect this about the y-axis, so this here is the y-axis and that's the x-axis. So if I kind of reflect it about the y-axis, I'll get a mirror image of, of x squared on the other side. So if I kind of turn this around, well, I'll get the exact same thing here as well. So as a result, this is symmetrical about the y-axis. So because it's symmetrical about the y-axis, it's an even function. Okay, what's an odd function then? So a function is said to be odd if f of negative x, so let me just clean that up a little bit. So f of negative x is equal to minus f of x. So for example, something like, so for example, Something like f of x equals x cubed is not a function. And the reason for that is because if I go ahead and plug in f of minus x, well, I'm going to get minus x all cubed, which is equal to minus x cubed. Well, that's the same thing as the original, but with a minus sign in front. So I have x cubed, and there's a minus sign in front of it, which is exactly what I have as my definition. So this is an odd function. So the property for not function is that it's symmetrical about the origin. So what does that look like? So for example, x cubed is a graph that looks something like this, roughly speaking. So if you notice, if I take this, if I take this portion of the graph and I reflect it about the origin, I'm going to get the exact same graph right there. So if I kind of twist it, so let's say here, and I kind of reflect it around this part, well, I'm going to get the exact same thing as I did right there. So nothing too mind-boggling there. Okay, so that covers what an even and odd function is. So it's possible that you can have neither an even nor an odd function though. So in this situation, what does that look like? Okay, well, let's go ahead and do an example of that situation. So in this case, we'll do an example of neither. What does that look like? Well, a function is said to be neither even nor odd if, well, obviously, if definitions, so this definition, and this definition, both fail. So what does that mean? So for reference, I'm gonna write down both definitions for even and odd. So f of negative x equals uh, f of x, or wait, hold on, no, f, uh, f of negative x equals f of x, yeah. That's for an even function. And for an odd function, we have f of negative x equals minus f of x. That is for an odd function. Both of these have to fail for something to be considered neater. So what is an example of that? Well, let's do this example for a second. So let's say that we have f of x equals 2x minus x squared. Well, if I go ahead and plug in my even definition, well, that means we get f of negative x equals 2 times minus x minus minus x squared. Well, that's going to give us minus 2x minus x squared, but that's not the same thing as the original function. So this is not, not, this is not an even function as a result. Okay, what about odd? Surely, like, that must work, right? Okay, well, let's try it. So if I plug in f of negative x, 
Well, that means once again, we'll, we're going to get two times negative x, just like before. I'm just doing it just to kind of make sure we get the hang of this. So that's going to give us minus 2x minus x squared. Okay, so according to definition, if I pull it, if I have, if I pull the minus sign out, I should get back the original function on the inside. Well, I won't. If I pull, if I pull out the minus sign, I'm going to get 2x plus x squared. But according to my definition, the only thing that should be different is a minus sign. The original function that's still inside the negative should be exactly the same as well the original. It's not. The, the original function was 2x minus x squared. However, here I have a plus x squared. So it's not an odd function either. So not odd. So therefore, f of x is neither. It's neither even nor odd. I should probably flip that around, but it's okay. Okay, so that's not too crazy. And the last thing we're going to be talk about is increasing and decreasing functions. So increasing and decreasing. Functions. Okay, so in this situation, again, this is not too crazy. So in this situation, all we do is, well, we take a look at the graphs visually as a result. So let's kind of make this a little bit neater. Okay, so if I go ahead and plot the, a few functions. So for example, a function is said to be increasing if the previous value is smaller than the next set of values. What does that mean? So let's have a graph that looks like this. So this right there is x1, and this right there is x2. So therefore, this value here is f of x1, and this value right there is f of x2. Okay, well, that means that, well, I can obviously, I can obviously see that f of x2 is bigger than f of x1. So therefore, f of x2 is bigger than f of x1. So therefore, it's increasing. So, in other words, the next value is bigger than the previous. So, f of x2 is bigger than f of x1. And as long as that happens, well, we have an increasing function. The next one is, well, decreasing, obviously. So, let's go ahead and draw that, draw that situation. So, in this situation, well, let's go ahead and draw this. So, right here and right there. Okay. So if I go ahead and draw my axis again, so right here and right there. So let's say this is x1, that's x2. So that's f of x1, and that's f of x2. Okay, so here the function is going to be decreasing because the next value is smaller than the previous one. So in this situation, we have that f of x2 is smaller than f of x1. Let me just clean that up a little bit. So as a result, this function is said to be decreasing. And because the function is decreasing, well, well, that's it. <laughs> so nothing too crazy there. Okay, and that's it. We'll do a few other things regarding functions in the next video. See you then.